Dr. Durga, I'm the Medical Director of OSS Center for Reproductive Medicine. Uh, we are actually conducting a series of uh, information uh, debates on different topics of fertility and uh, associations of different conditions with fertility. In that respect today, we just wanted to touch upon the topic of unexplained fertility. Now, when we are looking at fertility, there are different reasons for people having difficulty in conceiving. Broadly, it could be uh, when it comes to the woman, sometimes uh, difficulty in ovulations and also any hormonal imbalances that are associated with it. And the treatments then would mean investigations to see where the hormonal imbalance is and to correct it. And even after that, if the ovulation doesn't occur, then they go through treatments to help them ovulate. There's another aspect of uh, the uterine issues which also help in uh, sort of contributing to the factor of fertility which can be then detected and uh, surgical interventions are also a possibility. The second aspect is obviously about the sperm. Any issues in terms of the sperm, in terms of the count or the motility, then will ensure that we take the corrective measures to improve the count of the motility and based on where we are, whether it is possible to try timed intercourse or intrauterine insemination or if needed even IVF ICSI. The third factor is obviously about the tubes, wherein if the tubes are open or patent, then obviously we can try naturally or even IUI. But in some conditions, the tubes could be blocked and then we don't have a choice but to go for IVF. Now broadly, we are talking about ovulatory dysfunctions, sperm and then the tumor factor. But not everybody has any problems in any of these three factors when evaluated. It sometimes can be very frustrating for both the couple as well as the treating physician. Now this group of people are called unexplained infertility. Wherein the tubes are open, the sperm is entirely normal in terms of its count and the motility and the morphology and the woman also doesn't have any ovulatory dysfunctions or any problems in terms of ovulation. So this group of people are called to have unexplained infertility. Now, this is also not a small group. In fact, approximately between 25 to 30 people who have difficulty conceiving come fall into this group. And so, to answer their question sometimes is very difficult as to what is wrong going wrong and why don't they have any success with conceiving. Now, this is where we also have to explain to them as to what the treatment modalities are for this group of people and what are the success with different uh, treatments that we ensure for them. When we are looking at this group with unexplained fertility, the first uh, treatment that we suggest for them is intrauterine insemination. And the reason for suggesting intrauterine insemination is because, like we already established, they have no problems in ovulating. And there is no problem even in the count and the motility of the sperm. And the fact that the reproductive tract is also normal, as in the uterus being normal, the tubes being patent. But if they've been trying for a year, with all of these being normal and they still haven't conceived, then we suggest intrauterine insemination. Now with intrauterine insemination, what we are trying to establish is, we first give them medications, make them produce more eggs. So here, we are making them produce more eggs, therefore the chance and the probability of pregnancy is higher. Because in a natural cycle, you are producing just one egg. And this one egg hasn't helped them to conceive. So, we are trying to give them medications, make them produce more eggs. Once you produce more eggs, there is a higher possibility and a higher chance of a pregnancy happening. Now how do we do that? We do that with medications. We give them tablets or sometimes even injections. But during this course, they are monitored very carefully. Because obviously when we are trying to make them produce more eggs, there is also the possibility of a multiple pregnancy. So we have to balance how much medication we are giving them as to how they are responding to the treatment also. So during the first half of the cycle, we give them medications, monitor them carefully, see how many follicles they are developing. Usually when we are talking about intrauterine insemination, for this unexplained uh, group of people, we are aiming at between 2 to 3 follicles for development. Now these 2 to 3 follicles, we should aim for these follicles to reach a measurement that goes beyond 17 to 18 millimeters. So this is done with the aid of medicines and monitoring regularly with scans. Once they get to the stage where the follicles have developed, then we give them a trigger shot with a HCG injection. Now what this injection basically does is it completes the process of the maturation of the egg inside this follicle and it also helps in timing the release of the eggs from the follicle. The time after a HCG injection for the egg to release is between 34 to 36 hours. 
So this injection helps us time in the insemination of the sperm. Now the second aspect is coming to the sperm preparations. In IUI, what we tend to do is, once the husband gives us a sperm sample, it undergoes a process of preparation of the sperm, wherein all the uh, cells, the pus cells and epithelial cells and even the cellular plasma are basically removed and we just pick the best of sperms that are available. These undergo a process of centrifugation and cleaning wherein we just pick the sperms that have a better morphology and better count and better motility, very important. Now this process of preparation of the sperm also enables the sperm to help in terms of the fertilization of the egg. So once the sperm count and the motility, they are also enhanced with this process of centrifugation. During insemination, our endeavor at OSS is to make sure that we at least inseminate about 10 million motile sperms. So after the process of centrifugation, we pick these better sperms and then this is inseminated through a very soft catheter into the uterus. What is also very important is the timing of insemination. Now, there hasn't been much consensus as to whether the timing should be exactly 36 hours or should it be 40 hours or even 24 hours. So what we at OSIS tend to do is we do the insemination between 24 to 36 hours. We also occasionally make sure that the woman has ovulated so that we don't inseminate at a wrong time. Now after the insemination, then we look at support in the second half of the uh, cycle with either some progesterone medications. Usually the chances of success with an IUI is somewhere between 10 to 15 percent. Therefore, when we are looking at advising IUI, the second question that the couple asks are obviously how many cycles of IUI should we go for? Ideally what we would say is during investigations, if your tubes are patent, uterus is normal, we are having no problems with ovulation and the sperm also is enough to give us at least 10 million motile sperms for insemination, we normally tend to go between 3 to 4 cycles of IUI. Usually, most people tend to conceive in this cycle. If, even after 3 to 4 cycles of insemination, a couple doesn't conceive, then comes the question as to what the next step is.